Hi my beautiful people, it's Jason Vieira here from Fat Boy Hair, one of your educators, and I'm here today to teach you guys how to do something fun, something new and exciting, inspired by Coachella and all those wonderful festivals that are about to start now for festival season with the beautiful spring coming in. So today I'm using a handful of new products, mostly um, our new Sessions collection, which are these great black sprays right here. Um, I'm using a mix of our Ultra Clean Dry Shampoo and our Flexible Hairspray. Um, our Ultra Clean is unique to Fatboy because it is a powder-free dry shampoo. So unlike most of the other ones on the market, which give you that buildup on the scalp, it actually cleanses the hair using volcanic ash. So you don't get that white powdery substance that you'd get from other traditional dry shampoos. So it's really great on a finer hair type or great when you're going to a festival for you know a whole week where you know it might look great for that first day but then you keep putting that dry shampoo in and then it just gets that build up so that's why we're really trying to um, teach these girls use a dry shampoo that's not going to build up in your hair because at the end of the day what's the point in cleaning your hair by making it more dirty with powder that's my belief anyway so I want to show you guys how you can style with the dry shampoo because obviously it cleanses your hair beautifully but today I'm going to show you something really cool that you can do with it um, maybe on like your second day of the festival. So let's get started over here. This is the beautiful Brandy. As you can see I've done half of our look today already. Kind of inspired by our like Gwen Stefani, 90s music video, you know, space age alien almost. You know, when I was researching these Coachella hairstyles, I saw a lot of braids, a lot of colour, a lot of weaved in, you know, extensions and weaved in, um, you know, sewing and you name it. But generally always people wear their hair up at these festivals. It's very impractical to have it down, especially hair as long as brandies, because it, you know, it starts to get dirty, it starts to go, you know, limp and you just kind of lose that. Um, that style, let's just say. So up is the way to go with these festivals, either with some really nice ponytails or braids that will kind of keep your hair looking fabulous while you can party the day and the night away. So I've just started here by doing some classic Baby Spice ponytails and where I decide to choose my location to put these ponytails, I know it seems trivial, but it does make a huge difference as ponytail placement. So what I like to do, I use my comb just like this and I just tilt it across the head and where you get to that middle part where it just meets that nice ridge in there, that's where I pick my ponytail. It's the perfect most flattering place to put your um, baby spice ponytail, let's just say. And then in regards to wear on the head, I just kind of go above the ear and then use that tilt. Now how I like to do, um, one way I like to do ponytails, let's just say, is I grab my little bungee where are we? We all know these classic hairdressing tools. So I just kind of loosely grab it up and tie it in my in where I want my ponytail to be. Ever so, you know, loose. And then what I do is I go in and directionally blow dry all that hair and push all these grains to that one location. So then when I take out the bungee and properly tie it using hair elastic, because it's been set into that position, the hair will just kind of swoop up and, and tie there and you get this really nice tight finish. And to directionally blow dry today, I used our Boss Dog Styling Cream. It's a gel cream hybrid, so it gives you really nice, intense hold and shine that you get from a gel, but it's still really workable because of that cream element in there. So I love it for either really glamorous full blow dries or for really tight, slick looks like this because it gives you great control. And then just to finish it off and give you this nice shine that you've got here, I've just tapped a little bit of our water wax. So I just go tap, tap, tap like that and I just rub it on the hairline ever so like this. And it grabs all those little kind of baby hairs around and just gives them a really nice high shine that we love, that Pinterest photo ready finish that everybody loves these ponytails to have. Alrighty, so let's get started with these little cute buns that we've got here. So this is where our dry shampoo comes in handy. So we all know this dry shampoo can cleanse the hair, but I love it for pre-teasing. Because of the volcanic ash, it just gives you a really nice base to kind of start to tease. So I kind of just lay up a little closer than usual. If you want to use it as a dry shampoo, you want to be holding it out here. But because I'm using it for styling, I'm holding it ever so closer, just so you get more of that kind of um, density put into the hair, a nice structure um, to tease. I use these classic teasing brushes with the multiple bristles, because it just gives you the best, most intense kind of tease. Now with teasing, you always want to tease underneath 
where you want that body to be. So I know this hair's gonna come over like that. So I don't wanna be putting my teasing on this section over the top because it's just gonna create frizz and, and static and just not a nice smooth shape. But under here, because that's all gonna be hidden, I can just kind of go to town and really get a good base in there. You just, when you think you've teased enough, tease a little more, that's what I say, because you can always, as long as you do your teasing well, you can always lightly brush it out. And by teasing well, you don't wanna be ratting from the ends, you just wanna lightly hold the hair with even tension. I like to rip and weave like that through my fingers, and I just slightly, I just tease by ever so gently pushing that hair, just so you get a nice, almost like a, a cushioning happening in there because if you don't have that nice strong base when you go to brush it you're not if it hasn't got a base in there it will just kind of fall limp and you won't get these beautifully structured domes that you have in there so once you're happy with some good cushioning i'm then using the fat boy flexible hairspray i just spray it directly onto my brush i love it because it gets really lightweight kind of holds um, and it's great for this touching up details I love the multiple lacquer, that is my favourite hairspray, but it is strong, strong, strong hold and intense shine. So for when I'm just lightly building the shape like this and just kind of getting my structure in without gluing it in, that's where that flexible hairspray is the way to go because you can kind of spray and spray and spray and spray and it's not going to get built up and it's just going to grab these little flyaways and start to get that nice smooth shape happening. So when I brush out teasing, you just want to kind of lightly tickle the hair like this. You don't want to really go in and brush because you're just going to brush out all that hard work. So just kind of tickle that top bail ever so lightly. As you can see, you're really starting to get all those grains going in the one location without losing that structure in there. I always spray on my brush for stuff like this because hairspray is glue, right? So if you spray on two, the frizz. All you're doing is setting that frizz to be frizzy because you're, you're putting that glue directly on that shape. Whereas when you put it on that brush, as you lightly tickle down like this, you're using that glue to smooth down at the same time. Alrighty, so that's looking pretty good. Great. So to get these buns in, I use these little elastics here. Just using my mirror to make sure that we've got symmetry. So I kind of do one, obviously that's not tight enough, but don't go in and do too much twisting because if the shape's not right, you're just gonna end up cutting it out. So if you just lightly do it like that, you can adjust and be like, yep, that looks great. And then you can go in and keep tying. That looks pretty good to me. Tell me otherwise if you don't think so. And then I just use my tail comb like that to grab that elastic again. once more for good measure. You really want to make sure you get a nice tight bun because like I said earlier with the ponytail, if that ponytail's not tight, when you're doing all this work on the length of the ponytail, it's just going to all start to bunch and crease in there. So you need to make sure every single bit has got tight. So when you're doing the next section, this shape isn't going to move. Here's my tail comb, there we go. I'm a big tail comb fan. <laughs> As Ryan says, I love a good tail comb. For all these delicate kind of touching up, there's no other tool out there that's best, you know? It's old school, but the classics are classic for a reason. So to kind of smooth out these frizzies, I spray the spray onto my tail comb and smooth just like this, just to kind of get that shape going. I love this flexible hairspray for this delicate, light work where it's not so much structure 
that you're trying to glue in. It's just detail and, you know, defrizzing and light holding um, where you don't want necessarily the shape to be completely stuck in like a helmet. That's where this flexible is great because you do get that really nice build up. These are looking so cute. I'm obsessed. So I'm just spraying with my flexible. Great. So now I'm just back combing our next piece. And like I said, you wanna hold the ponytail with even tension because some people hold it like a rope. So you get really heavy tension in there and in there, but the middle goes sagging. So it's important to get even tension the whole way through so you get an even tease. And like I said, just when you feel like you've had enough, oh, I totally forgot, our ultra clean dry shampoo. I was like, why is it this holy? Because you've got no dry shampoo in there. Really, like I said, when you're using it like dry shampoo, hold it at a distance. But when you're using it for styling, especially as like a, um, as a pre-tease foundation, go in there, hold it a little closer than what you normally would because you're not gonna see it, you know? It doesn't matter if it looks a little producty, you want it to be producty because that's what's gonna give you a nice base for that tip. So that teasing, when you go to lightly brush it out, doesn't just all completely fall out of the head. But you wanna be doing your teasing effectively, but lightly. Because if you do it all crazy and you just ch -ch -ch and you get all that, you know when you like do roots to ends and you get all that bunching, all you're doing is creating frizzing static. You're not actually putting teasing into the hair. You're just creating texture and there's a difference. Teasing needs to be cushioning. And so many people unfortunately get it wrong. Because it is a lost art, you know? Not many people are teasing and ratting their hair nowadays, but it is so crucial to so many of these structured shapes because if you don't have that foundation in there, your shape just kind of falls limp and nobody likes a limp shape. So as you can see, I'm really kind of just lightly going over that same section over and over so you get that nice, looks crazy under there, but over the top, really nice and smooth, see? You always wanna make sure you leave a veil, unless you want it to be really textured and frizzy, and that's fine, then tease the whole thing, but if you want the top to be smooth, don't bother teasing it, because you don't need to tease that first veil. Alrighty, so that's feeling good to me. So now I'm gonna do my hairspray on the brush. I'm gonna start tickling that hair and getting that shape in. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Alrighty, that's looking good to me. So now okay. I'm using, I like to use these, they're almost like little orthodontist elastics. They're great for braiding and great for this kind of delicate work. And like I said, you want to get it nice and tight because if it's loose, when you go to do the teasing in the next section, all this hair will kind of start to become uneven. And if you have to do it again, do it again, God damn it. If you have to cut it out and tie it again, just go for it. You know, and then because you've got that teasing in there, you can kind of pull and it keeps that nice round shape. So when I go to sew that hair in, it'll just have that perfect little time. I'm obsessed. Oh. So on the first one you did the yes. elastic over the top, whereas this one you actually looped the ponytail. Do you know what I mean? Say again. <laughs> so like when you did your, sorry guys. The initial ponytail. The, the, the first one up here, yeah. you went over the top like that. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Because, um, like a bun. Like a bun. It's exactly that. This first one is a bun, and this essentially looks like a bun. Yeah but you've got nothing to kind of wrap around. So that yeah. first one you want to do like a classic bun almost to get this fan shape. Yeah. And then these other ones, obviously because there's no ponytail to tie it to and get yeah. that shape, you just kind of need to use your teasing and your sewing to keep it in that exact shape. To Love give the it. illusion like there's almost multiple ponytail buns all going from the head. If you look like it, almost looks like exactly like that. There's buns like five ponytails all the way through. When it's not, it's just one, and then the tricks and illusion of hairdressing, I guess. <laughs> right. um, yeah, so as I was saying, with this kind of it's setting, basically, you're setting the hair to um to hold the shape in place. I use big fringe pins like this. 
and you just want to lightly hold them and combine the hair where you need it to because before those fringe pins are there these buttons and you'll see it on this side they kind of just like flop around and they're not molded and stuck to the head like that so i just use giant fringe pins in a different color so you can see where they are and i'll show you when i get there you just kind of grab the hair and lightly hold it in and then you spray it and then you let it set so that side's currently setting and keeping that hair in place there I love using either big fringe pins or, or duckbill clips because like I said, sometimes you don't have an assistant but you also don't have five pairs of hands and you need things to be held and set in while you're doing other parts. So I like to use big fringe pins and duckbill clips to kind of hold either braids when I need you know, to move on to another section of hair or the no crease are fabulous as well but you can't use no crease for something like that. No crease clips look like this. I use them a lot for you know, vintage styling and this and that. They just give you all that hole, but they don't leave a crease in the hair because that's another thing. Be careful with these duckbills because they can crease the hair. Alrighty, so we're doing our last bun now. So just to kind of recap, I used our ultra clean dry shampoo really close. Spray, 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 spray. As you can see, it kind of looks like almost like a nest under there, but over the top, it's nice and smooth and beautiful. So I use, I spray the dry shampoo right in there just to give us a nice, foundation for teasing and then I just go over and over and over with my teasing brush over the same kind of section just to get a good foundation there because if you don't have the, that guts in the bun it won't sit in this beautiful round kind of shape that you see it'll just kind of fall limp and it won't have structure to it alrighty and so when you're happy with your bun use your flexible spray onto the brush and we do that because Hairspray is good, and if you spray it onto a shape that's not finished yet, all you're doing is setting that shape to be stuck in the frizz or in, in, its, in its not finished format, let's just say. Whereas when you spray it, on, spray it on the brush, you can use that glue to smooth down at the same time. It's an old trick, but it's classic, and it works a dream. And like I said, with, when you're brushing out teasing, you just want to tickle the topmost layer. Don't actually brush and get the full bristles in there because all you're going to do is brush out all that hard work. I just kind of lightly tickle with the top of my brush like that. Great. So we're doing our last ponytail now in there. Boom. Using my little orthodontist elastics. So now these, this is great. This is already a look, you know? And that was kind of the initial inspiration with these girls who just put multiple elastics to their hair to get this cute kind of like, almost Princess Jasmine kind of, <laughs> kind of vibe going. But we want to take it a step further. So I'm obsessed with sewing and exposed sewing. And what I mean by sewing, I use these, their um, crochet hooks. You can just buy them in any craft store. They're these giant plastic needles. You want to use plastic, don't use metal, because that won't feel very nice on the scalp. Um, so you just use, and then I've got these wax-coated cotton. And you want to get wax-coated, because if it's regular cotton, it will catch on the hair, and it will kind of grab the little frizzies around. So I love the wax-coated. Other people have different preferences, but um, you can even buy thread for hair sewing but it's kind of expensive and you can just use any old elastic if you are i'm sorry any old thread as long as it's wax coated i love sewing this is uh, this is exposed sewing as you can see here i really wanted to show off the color and the movement i love the blue and pink and the blonde hair but another beautiful part about sewing is you can kind of use it for um to do updos so another pinless tilt chair that way for me sweetie perfect so for when you want to keep structure in, a, um, in an updo but you don't want to do pins or you're doing a messy shape, you can use natural coloured thread, so either blonde or brown, however you want. And you can kind of sew updos together. They're great for French rolls, great for twists. So I'm just getting a, a base in, so I'm just kind of sewing, lifting up this ponytail and sewing from underneath so you can't see the ends. I kind of loop through like that. And because it's wax and like this, it's very easy to get out of the hair. So don't be, <laughs> or get caught in the ear. So don't be nervous.
to cut it out. If it was actual string, that would be a nightmare to get out of the head, but because it's wax, it'll just slide straight out. So as you can see, we've got a nice knot in there. So I'm just gonna double it up, just for good measure. You're coming on the, on the other side of the elastic. Exactly. You wanna do it on the non-exposed side, because if you do it on the other side, you'll see all the knots and you'll see all the ends of the, of the elastic. All right, great. So now, this first part is just to hide the elastic, so I'm just gonna wrap it around that first ponytail a couple times, going from underneath. As you can see, just to hide that elastic. You know, this is the fun little addition. This is to add a little personality to an otherwise funky hairstyle, but this just gives that little point of difference, that little cella, cella dream, that cella fantasy. Alrighty, I love that, obsessed. Great, so now, to get these and sew them so you get these beautiful ridges, what you do, you hold the ponytail up, grab your needle, and weave through that last, of uh, their next elastic, just like that, boom. Get through so there. And, on, and behind this one. Exactly, so you right. go behind. So what happens is that thread will no longer be seen when that comes over like that. Mm -hmm. And because it's in there, what you do now, where you want that, I'm just gonna double check where I've sewn this one. So it's just above the ear. So now what you do, you go above the ear, and because you've anchored it in there, what happens? When you put it through that part of the ponytail, it's another reason why you need a really firm ponytail because if it's loose, it's not gonna hold that hair in place. So now, as you can see, Boom. Here's our little shade. Yeah. yeah. Woo! So now I'm just gonna go over a couple more times just for security and to cover that elastic again so it looks like she's almost got multiple ponytails and buns to the hair when really it's just one. And you're still sewing that into the... Into the ponytail itself because if you're just wrapping it around itself, that's fine and you'll cover the elastic, but you're not gonna have that guts and foundation at the bottom because you need it to be sewn to the ponytail because otherwise they'll just fall flat like any old bun, whereas you want them to be ridges and, and have this kind of music video vibe to it. So I'm just gonna go over once more for the colour. You can do whatever colours you want. You don't have to use blue and pink. There you go, how bloody cute is that? Alrighty. So before I move on to the next section, I'm just gonna see we've got all this fluffy, fluffy, organic kind of stuff happening. So I'm just gonna start smoothing them out before I move on. Using our flexible hairspray, spray it onto the edge of the tail comb and start to smooth this shape in. Great. That's good for now. Do all the final touching up in a second. So now we're going to move on to our next sewing section. Put down our hairspray. So now check where you've sewn the other side. So we're kind of about there because you want symmetry in these beautiful looks. So once again, hold the ponytail up, grab your needle, sew it through that elastic you just did because that's going to become your anchor point. Bam, just like that. And then find your place, your placement, give that a little stretch. Tilt that way for me, sweetie. Okay. Looks good, looks good. So then, like I said, you want to catch that hair of the ponytail. No, no, no. Yeah. You want to catch that base of the ponytail. There we go. And because it's looped through that elastic, when you get that ponytail in, it's gonna keep that bun in place. There we go, see? And then I'm just gonna go over a couple more times for security and also to show off our fun little color. Like I said, this sewing's great, not only if you wanna have exposed color like this, but also tilt back normally. I'm just gonna double check our balance. Yeah, that's awesome. Not only for um, exposed coloring like this, but when you're doing any kind of like, tilt again, thanks babes. When you're doing any kind of French twists or messy buns, 
you can kind of sew your whole shape together. Especially if you use a natural thread where you won't notice it, it's actually really nice to give structure and hold or to flatten shapes in where pins and, and fringe pins just won't cut it. Alrighty. So now I'm just gonna give it a little comb before I move on to my next section. So we're doing our last little bit. Lucky, weave through the elastic on the underneath so you don't notice. Come on. There we go. Yeah. Look straight on for me, tilt down. Great. And now where is that sewn? Right at the neck in there. Literally at the last point you could probably, I'm literally sewing into her baby hairs, but hen all the same. And if you run out of thread, just tie it off and grab more. I, that's what happened on this side. Oh, look at that. My needle's come off. a perfect opportunity to kind of just like tie that off then. I'm gonna cut it and start again. So I'm gonna actually tie the knot under here where it's gonna be hidden. So I just go in and then I loop through to tie a knot just like any old sewing. If you don't know, ask your mother. Once more for good measure. I actually, I'm glad that fell through because I'll show you what I did on this side with the ends once I'm done sewing them. Beautiful. Right. Now they're looking a little crazy and not as molded, but stay with me. And like Genevieve asked earlier, there are little tricks you can do to mold these buns together. So I'm gonna actually leave this just hanging down and I'll show you what I'll do that in a second. I'm gonna move on to these bun moldings. So using my flexible hairspray, I'm gonna spray and just dip it in with the can like that. Just to start smoothing that hair and getting that bun shape in. And then when you wanna smooth this hair down, spray it onto your ponytail, I mean onto your comb. All right, now here comes the fringe part. So you grab your big fringes. Like I said, I like to use a color that's not the same as the head so you can see exactly where you put them. Ideally, I'd actually be using ones a little bigger than that, but because this is actually quite a delicate style, it doesn't matter too much, whereas if there's a lot of volume, like let's say you're doing a big bouffant and you need to pick certain pieces, the bigger ones are best because you can really see exactly where they are. So I just lightly grab an edge of the bun and just kind of boop onto the ponytail. Because what it does, it keeps those ends together and attached to the ponytail, so it looks like it's just kind of like I said, almost coming out of its own ponytail. Pop your head down for me. So I use my... I like to use also my fringy to smooth out. And pull that teasing in to get that nice shape in there. Lucky last, pop your head down. You know what, I'm actually gonna take this side out because that would be set. Look at that. Just to get it out of the way. Just to get it out of the way, this will be a nightmare. And see, when you take them out, they're perfectly smoothed because you've set them in. Beautiful. I don't know about you guys, but I think this looks pretty goddamn cute. Look down at the floor for me, sweetie. Beautiful. I'm just gonna fringe that. 
This is kind of just great party here all around, to be honest. Coachella, your grandma's birthday, whatever, <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> Alrighty, so as you can see, they're really starting to kind of take hold now. So to really clean it up, I'm going to use my light hairspray and just smooth in those grab out with your can and the reason we use the can is because it's metal and it's not it hasn't got any natural oils on it obviously so it just kind of smooths that out because if you use your hand for this your natural oils and the stick of your hand is going to pull those flyaways back off the bun this is great for any kind of molding um, as we know heat activates almost everything with hair so I grab a little diffuser a spray my flexible and I grab my just low wing high heat just to kind of set that bun to be nice and smooth and then cool it down make sure you lose the low wings so you don't blow that shape and as you can see it's just grab that little hand out of the way Alright, so I'll show, you, I'll show you what I did to kind of set it, but before I do that, I'll show you what I do with the ends here. Yeah. So, I just used, because I left my thread hanging oh, down before, good. I've just grabbed the end that was sticking out from that last ponytail, and I'm just wrapping the thread around it to create this almost like, for lack of a better word, rat's tail at the bottom. just to show off that color and really tie our blue and pink because they're so cute. And when you get to the end of the hair, wrap around, tie a knot. I use my thumb to keep that pressure there so you don't lose the twist. Perfect. There we go, and then I twist back up the head just to put a little bit more color on through the strand. So you're going back up afterwards? I'm going back up afterwards. All right, and to be honest, the reason we, we go back up the head is so you don't get the ends down the bottom. So it just yeah. kind of looks like two little knots like yeah. that. And, and you just clip the two ends. I clip the other one just because the ends weren't tied and then I'm going to tie... I don't know what I'm going to do, to be honest. Sometimes, see, that's hair. You just, Maybe you've got to see what feels good. So I'm going to tie another knot to tie it up the top. Beautiful. All righty, now, lucky last. My favourite, multiple lacquer. You almost thought I didn't use her, but here we are. Just to finally lock this shape in and smooth. This multiple lacquer smells like a goddamn dream. Doesn't smell like a Coachella girl, let's just say that. No. It smells like a, a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't smell like a Coachella girl. How embarrassing. <laughs> Clearly I've never been. <laughs> <laughs> and just spray it where those fringes were. Boom. And then... Look at that beautiful shine you get. I didn't want to use it throughout because like I said, it is a very strong hold. So if you're doing delicate, just like touching up, it'll just set those frizzies too much. You want to use your light to, for your molding and then when you're fully happy with your shape, then get your lacquer in there. And then last but not least, get your heat in so it is low wind because you don't want to disturb the style, but high heat because you want to lock it in. And just hit where you put those fringes in. This is also a great technique you know when you're doing those bridal chignons at the bottom they've got that beautiful crescent moon shape but you don't want to be doing the fringes all around the edges to hold that crescent moon shape because you'll just see them all exposed around the sides which I think looks a little naff whereas if you just set them like this when you take the fringes out they're going to be stuck there if you use a good hairspray like more than lacquer they'll be stuck there alrighty so you'll see on this side when I take them out Bam, look at that. They're just perfectly holding that shape in there. How bloody cute. So if you've done a good job and you've done your moldable, boom, look at that. She's held, she's got the shape. And 
And we are finished. This is our little Coachella. Oh, there's one more pin. <laughs> oh. Just wonder if I want to cross these over like that for a little, a little something. Like they're like little pigtails, aren't they? I know they've got they've got to get that little like I don't know homage, right. just so, to kind of tie in the colour. So let's sh 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 do a full a three sixty, and then I'll give you a full recap. Oh, she's looking good. 